we had to use diplomacy to get countries to put in ambitious commitments and then figure out how they were going to implement them. Because you have some countries who would say that they're existentially threatened by climate change itself, but the oil exporting countries would say they're existentially threatened by the responses to climate change. How is it possible to come up with some kind of agreement that addresses the concerns of both of those types of countries. One of the ways in which we're able to reach agreement is that these COPs, the Conference of the Parties that take place at the very end of uh, each year, they're not the only thing. We've got meetings all year round um, at all levels, sort of technical levels, political levels, kind of laying the groundwork for what we're ultimately going to uh, kind of hopefully reach agreement on at the very end. The IPCC has had this like completely sort of symbiotic relationship with the treaty process so that whatever report comes out of the IPCC, that will be the subject of discussion at the meetings of the uh, either the framework convention or whatever the successor agreement was. And it will definitely inform what the parties, you know, decide to do. It's so all kinds of interesting uh, stuff going on in the world. You're not going to see that in the formal outcome of the COP, but always pay attention to the things that are going on on the outside. They may have, you know, 120 countries involved rather than 200, but, you know, so what? <laughs>